another edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. And we have a lineup of business news that made headlines during the week, as well as an insightful interview. My name is Na Oyokwote. Now, in this episode, we bring you an exciting interview with a tech entrepreneur, Makafui Ewuku of the Academic City University College, who came together with some of his students to recycle a heap of plastic for cash. My colleague, Mauli Aholumega, has the details. Stay tuned. As part of efforts to deal with the plastic waste menace, a student-led group has designed an innovation known as the Sustain City Project. It seeks to re recover waste generated by the community and then sent through a weighing program and then resold to recycle companies. On this week's edition of BizTech, I'll be engaging the team lead of that project and also some students who took part in the project. Before I introduce my guests, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome to BizTech on Ghana Web TV. Welcome up for that break. My guest on this week's edition of This Tech is Makafu Ewuku, and he is the Technology and Entrepreneurship Manager here at the Academic City University College. Makafu, welcome to This Tech. How are you doing? I'm good, and you? Good to see you. Awesome. Yeah, so we are standing right here in your lab. I don't know which lab is this. Where are we right now? Uh, so this is the engineering lab at Academic City University. Uh, here at Academic City, what we have is a full-blown engineering lab uh, that can support the uh, theory work and a classroom work that the students are working on. Mm. So it's more like a hands-on, uh, you know, practical sessions to make sure that whatever theories they are learning, they can get to actually try them out and perfect these things because eventually that's why we are training them. We want them to go out there and actually solve problems. Mm. So we need them to actually feel the problems with their hands mm. and, you know, get to understand how they have to go about dealing with these problems. Okay. Yeah, so your, your forte is to deal with problems and find problems and actually get solutions. And how is that going so far, especially with the students here? It's exciting, okay. you know, and uh, these type of journeys are very tricky because for most uh, young people in Africa, the educational system we've created is being more of a classroom type of educational system. Mm. So getting young people to come out of the classroom, do more than just studying for exams can be challenging. Mm. But when you are able to, to guide them, you are able to help them to understand that the bottom line is for them to actually go out and make an impact, but then they can start making the impact here. Mm. They become more motivated and they are more willing to you know, identify problems and come forward to see what solutions they can create for these problems. Okay. Yeah, so you're the technology and entrepreneurship manager. For those who don't know what that is, what specifically is your role here? Right, so in Academic City, we have a center for technology and entrepreneurship. Okay. The essence of the center is actually to uh, help students on the ideation journey. Uh, so if you have a, an idea, you have a project, you have an innovation you want to actually work on, yeah. The Technology and Entrepreneurship Center is where you come okay. uh, for support. Right. Uh, whether you're confused or not, it's, the, it's where you come. Okay. And it's the same place where if you have an idea that you actually want to register as a, a business, the center incubates these ideas for students. Okay. So we have incubation programs, we have competitions that the students can participate in and win cash money mm -hmm. to support their proof of concept project. Okay. The center also has uh, partners that um, have accelerator programs that allow for projects that has gotten to commercialization stage to actually be, to be fast-tracked to where they become full-blown businesses that are creating jobs. Okay. Also, the center is a place where if you come to Academic City, uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence, when we talk about robotics, when we talk about uh, mechatronics, you get to have a feel of these devices, okay. these uh, equipment, these emerging technologies in Academic City at the, the tech center. So this is a bit about the tech center. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, so I see a very large, it looks like a bottle. <laughs> I see small bottles in there. 
I understand this is this from the for the Sustain City project. Yes. Just give us a brief on what the project is. Yeah. So basically, we have a STEAM club on campus. Okay. And uh, we don't say STEM, we say STEAM, Steam. because okay. uh, we've added arts. Yeah. That's the A is okay. for art. So science, technology, engineering, arts. Yes, and, and math. math. Okay. Because the art part is very critical. Okay. Because being able to conceptualize and develop ideas before it even comes out of it, your head is an art. Okay. And this is something that students need to be encouraged and guided to learn how to do. You have to be able to conceptualize the thing first okay. before you can create it. Okay. So what we are doing is that through the, the STEAM club on campus, mm. uh, I've been working with the students to actually develop a plastic waste management solution for ACT. Okay. And uh, uh, we decided that we we're going to set up a campus startup okay. uh, that has a, a couple of portfolios to create value within the sustainability, circular economy, and plastic pollution space. Mm. So, first of all, we are recovering all the plastic waste the university generates. Mm. And we are not just recovering it, we are documenting what is recovered in tonnage. Okay. And then, when we document, we are also entering it into a global marketplace app. Wow. which is available online, which is accessible to any recycling company that wants to buy plastic waste from any community. Okay. So they can come to Academic City and buy what we have mm. for recycling. Then we are also using some of the cash we are generating from mm. selling the plastic waste to recycling companies to start a buyback program for the immediate community. Wow. So that women especially, because uh, most of the people who work in the waste sector uh, that do picking of waste are women. Yeah. Most of them are above the age of 40, some are divorced women, some are single mothers. And we want to create value so that they can get more from this exercise. Because okay. when they collect the waste, they have to take it to Medina to go and sell. They have mm. to pick a car. But if we create a buyback center here within the community, mm. then that extra transport that they lose they can keep it they and get they get more value from picking the waste. Okay. So that's one of the values you want to create for women in the community. Okay. Then we also went ahead to engineer this receptacle. Mm. This is a plastic waste receptacle. Okay. This project is actually a project, uh, uh, it's a partnership between academic city and industry. Okay. Uh, so this is a Macintosh Africa proof of concept project right. that has been brought to the doorsteps of the university. Okay. And that is how the future of university should be. Mm. Industry should bring problems that they want to solve mm. to the doorsteps of you know, institutions where students and faculty can work together to actually develop the solutions that are relevant enough and present it back to to, to, to industry mm. to actually fix problems we have in our community. Okay. So this is a concept by Macintosh Africa. We wanted to develop a receptacle that is fun to use, that can be used in offices, in marketplaces, in lorry stations, in schools, in hospitals for recovering plastic waste. Mm. So that if we are able to separate plastic waste in this way, it keeps its value okay. and is non-contaminated. Mm. So whatever products we are even going to create from this plastic waste are durable products because the plastic waste is not contaminated. Yeah. So the engineering of the receptacle is one big aspect of the project. Okay. Uh, we just finished it and uh, it's an, it was an exciting journey because we did 3D modeling which okay. is uh, additive manufacturing mm. and uh, some of the parts of the receptacle were 3D printed here on campus. Okay, all right. Yeah, so before we come to how this was made, I'll just take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Yeah, I've been speaking with Makafi Ewuku and he's the Technology and Entrepreneurship Manager here at the Academic City University College. And he's going to be taking me through this receptacle that they have here and they are going to ensure that plastic waste is kept. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Powers and principalities. There's so much fire inside me. Tragedy struck when part of the largest hillside at the kosher rubbish dump collapsed. It's going to be fun to see how he goes about approaching this game.
Welcome back for another break. My guest on this week's edition of This Tech is Makafui Ewuku, and he's the Tech and Entrepreneurship Manager here at the Academic City University College. Makafui, you've been giving me some very big, big words, receptacles <laughs> and all of that, yeah. Now, this is the receptacle. Yes. How did you guys come up with this? So what we wanted to create was, in essence, to change people's behavior. Okay. And the bigger problem for plastic pollution in Ghana is behavior. Mm. Whether it is the behavior of the workers of the traditional waste management companies, mm. whether it is the attitude of government mm. towards funding for yeah. the sector, whether it is the there. attitude of the local government authorities not to create the sustainable solutions, mm. whether it's the behavior of citizens who are polluting the environment. Mm. So the issue or the bottom line is behavior. behavior. So in developing or designing systems, you have to look at the behavior of people. Mm. So we want to look at the behavior we want to change. And okay. we want to look at what's the easiest way to influence behavior. Right. But when you're creating the system, it has to be easy for people to use. Mm. So we want them to use it without even realizing that they are using, using it. it. Okay. So we wanted to create something that was fun to interact with. That will encourage people to put their bottles here instead of the regular bin. Wow. So that influenced the design. That, that, so the, the whole design thinking was about something that was fun for people to engage with. OK. And I, I can't see, but notice, I see some small, arty dolphins here. Yes. Well, what was the brain that went behind? Was it the art in the stem that you spoke about? Yes. Yeah, so uh, basically, at Academic City, we do additive manufacturing. OK. So we have 3D printers on campus. And wow. some of our amazing students that work with these 3D printers are female students. Wow. And, nice. and, and, and what we do is that when we are working on any project, we do 3D modeling and uh, we eventually do 3D printing to support the pr project. And all this is done in-house? Yes, all this is done here. Wow. So this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a, a narrative, a very powerful narrative about the problem we are trying to solve. Mm. So by keeping the plastics out of the environment and out of the gutters and the storm drains, we are protecting the species in the sea okay. that are endangered because of the plastic pollution. Wow. So we've done a couple of modeling of uh, sea lions, yes. uh, turtles, dolphins, yeah. dolphins, penguins, and we are installing it all over the, uh, the, the, the receptacle. The, the, okay. So anybody who comes close to it, the, the receptacle will speak to the person. To yes. Okay. But how long did it take for you guys to build this? Right. So this was a proof of concept project. Okay. It's the first time we are building something like right, this. Right. So a lot of thinking went into the design. And when, as and when we go along the journey, we get somewhere, we want to change the okay. design, we want to change the approach. Yeah. So it took a long time. Mm. And then one key thing about this project is that we also wanted a lot of students to participate in the installation. Okay. So we created a participatory design. Okay, so and you invited them to Exactly, so the design will determine whether somebody can join in or not. <laughs> so these are, like, these are things you have to always think about. Yeah. For instance, when we are doing Christmas trees from bottles, we think about the design. Mm. How do we design it so that even children can participate in the process? Mm. So we, we used mesh and we hand woven we 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 wo we we weave the we woven the whole installation with the hand bare hands wow with uh, zip ties wow. and it took uh, about uh, a bit over two months wow for us to, to actually finish yes to finish this installation wow so I, so this is the mesh yes you guys use. and then I see some lights also yes. as well yes what is the lights uh, some form of arty or de decoration as well so two things okay we want the receptacle to also be used in the night. So wow. it has to be attractive so and visible. No, no, not just for daytime. Wow. Even it, so you can see we have two windows okay. through which you drop the, the plastic one, yeah. waste. Okay. And there are reflectors around the window. So in the night, they are very visible. Yeah. And then we wanted to have the light in them also so that in the night they can be used. Okay. But also we want it to be used in spaces for like parties, okay. for like events, okay. where they generate a lot of plastic waste, mm. but then there's also music. Okay. So music and light and, all you know, together, yeah. they all just, you know, come together in one fine uh, wow. setting. Wow. So finally, I want to touch on the weighing system, which you, you, yes. you take, this, you bring your plastic and then yes. you get money for it. Yes. How does that work? Right, so we are creating a buyback program for the community. Yeah. Uh, mostly it's the women who benefit from this program. Great. So when we recover the plastic waste from campus and then also the ones we get from the staff uh, from their homes, 
we have a couple of uh, recycling companies that we are signing onto the program okay. uh, who will be buying from us. Nice. And then uh, we accumulate the cash for a while and then we'll launch a buyback program for the community. So the women will know that when they bring one bag of plastic waste, this is the value it has. Wow. So they bring it to campus. We have a weighing frame that we've developed. Okay. We have a weighing scale. Mm -hmm. We we'll weigh it, we we'll document it, and then we we'll compute the cash value so of the plastic waste. As well. Yes, yes. Okay. So we we'll compute the cash value of what you have brought and immediately give you the cash as we take the plastic waste wow. from you. Simple and easy. As yes, that. and for these women, you know, the, the money they get from, from bringing the plastic waste might not seem to be a lot of money, but it's money that goes a long way to feed them and their families. That's true. I mean, some of them could make as much as uh, 150 or 200 CDs on plastic waste they will bring. Wow. And as, as, as low as uh, 10 or 20 CDs okay. on it. Wow. So every student is using this, right? Yes. Yeah, so we, this is the first one we've built. Okay. We are launching it in November. Okay. But the aim is to build a couple more for the campus, for the hostel, for the admin block, for the classroom block, and then for the cafeteria. Then in the long term, Macintosh Africa is working to commercialize this okay. so that it can end up in our lorry stations, our marketplaces, our offices, and then our homes and our schools. Wow. That's great innovative. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Yeah, I'm sure you've been enjoying that conversation. I've been speaking with Makafui Ewuku, and he's a tech and entrepreneurship manager here at the Academic City University College. And we've been discussing plastic waste and how they are also using innovation to curb plastic waste. <music>so I have here with me one of the students who took part in the receptacle for the Sustain City project. Anna Bwidi, how are you? Welcome to Best Tech. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I understand you're part of the students that took, took part in this project. How did it go for you? Um, so it was exciting. I mean, um, through the project, we learned some soft skills um, and also um, some technical skills. Being a business student and being on this project was really great as well. But was there a specific need? Or problem that you guys found before you decided to come up with these ideas to set this, this, this thing up? Yes, so we realized that the school was um, producing a lot of plastic um, from drinking bottles mainly and we decided to keep this and create a sustainable project like these. Okay, and working on it, how was the feeling like? <laughs> it was it was um, quite an exciting one with everyone coming on board and also seeing like um, people from different courses, so business students, um, engineering students, and also journalism students coming on board to help um, work on it. Okay. I'm sure you have other projects in the pipeline. Can you share some of them with it? Um, yes, yeah, so presently we've worked on um, a plastic shed okay. um, made um, solely out of plastic and wood, and um, we are thinking of creating a Chalote bus stop as well wow. from um, Chalote um, waste. So those are like um, a few of the projects in line. Okay, all right, Nana, thank you very much. Thank you yeah, too. So that has been Nana Bwedi, and he's one of the students that took part in the Sustain City project, and they are seeking to curb plastic waste in the country. This has been this week's edition of This Tech on Ghana Web TV. My name is Maunia Hodmega. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Maoli, for this insightful interview. Up next is Biz Headlines. So to our very first story on the aviation sector, Vice President Mahamudu Baumia has stated that the Ghana card will by the end of the first quarter of 2022 be accepted as an e-passport in 197 borders globally and 44,000 airports in the world. According to him, the unique biometric identification card issued by the Ghana National Identification Authority will ensure Ghanaians in the diaspora can effectively travel. By the end of the first quarter next year, the Ghana card will be recognized globally as an e-passport and can be read and verified in all ICAO compliant borders. That is 197 countries, 44,000 airports in the world. When this happens, holders of the Ghana card will be allowed to board any flight to Ghana. Furthermore, the good news for diasporan Ghanaians is that when the Ghana Immigration uh, Service is linked to the NIA architecture, and that will be soon, 
Diasporan Guyanians who hold the Ghana card should not have to obtain visas to return to Ghana. The National Petroleum Authority has assured of fuel price stability on consumers once the price stabilization and recovery levies on petrol, diesel and LPG takes effect. The levy, which is yet to be approved by Parliament, missed its implementation date for November 1, 2021, at the House, is required to pass the legislation. Chief Executive of the Authority, Mustafa Hamid, speaking to journalists on Tuesday in Koforidua, in the Eastern Region, assured that once the PRSL is approved, consumers will not witness astronomical jumps in the prices of fuel. Once the people have seen at the pump that this week, the prices haven't gone up. It gives them a measure of confidence that going forward, there will be a measure of stability. We were hopeful that from the first November window, we would not see astronomical jumps at the pump. I haven't seen that which would suggest to me that the price stabilization and recovery levy removal is working. He continued that the, pr the fuel prices have been stable, which is exactly what we intended it to be, that in this window, the prices do not even go up though the international prices have still gone up. These were the words of Dr. Hamid. Now on the agriculture sector, the director of the statistical, social and economic research has called for special focus to be placed on the agricultural manufacturing sector to create jobs. According to Professor Peter Quarte, the sectors which are labor intensive when well prioritized and harnessed will spare economic growth. We've have, we witnessed an economy that has seen appreciable uh, growth rates, which is good. We are among the uh, fastest growing economies in the world. That is good. But then the question is which sectors are growing? You find that um, agriculture and manufacturing, the less by intensive sectors of the economy, are not growing as much as what I would have expected. And if that is not the case, that is not happening, it's going to affect our job creation efforts. Because these are critical areas that employ more people. So you want to channel resources into, apart from the other sectors, ensure that these two critical sectors grow um, at a very high pace to absorb uh, labor. Of course, COVID-19 has affected a lot of things. But as we move, as we move out of the um, negative effects and, and record positive growth, we ought to grow in the areas that are critical rather than growing in services, low value services, retail, you know, we need to grow in the manufacturing sector. Over 230 million Ghana cities remains outstanding as debt by the private sector to the Social Security and National Insurance Trust due to defaults, Director General of the Trust, Dr. John Ofori Tenkrain, has revealed. Addressing employers at the 2021 Employers Breakfast Meeting with the Trust, Dr. Tenkrain said, as of September this year, the confirmed debts of establishments within the private sector amounted to over 200 million Ghana cities. This will certainly go up if we retrieve all outstanding contribution reports and update inspections on all establishments. The Director General indicated to the employers that the trust takes no delight in taking legal action against them. But if we do not they will not be able to fulfill their obligation to pay retirement benefits to your workers. He added, when you default in paying contributions, these monies become debts which we must collect. If you fail to collect these debts, it does not absolve us of our responsibility and obligation to the worker. On our final story, investors and the global community have been assured that Ghana's economy remains one of the most robust and stable destinations to invest. According to the Minister of State at the Ministry of Finance, Charles Edu Boahin, the country's economic fundamentals rather remain strong as it, was some, as it was some three to four months ago, despite the adverse impacts of the coronavirus pandemic, addressing participants at a breakfast meeting on November 2, 2021, Edu Boahin expressed concern over the heightened sell-off of Ghana's bonds on the international market. In his words, I'm sure you all noticed the global sell-off in our euro bonds in the international stock market. There's been a general sell-off, but I am sure those of Ghana have been quite pronounced. 
it is a situation that is of concern, but I want to assure the Ghanaians that nothing fundamentally has changed. We were still on track to meet our deficit. We are still on track to meet our revenue target of the year. We believe that the market's reaction is not based on the fundamentals, which are still as robust as they were three to four months ago. It's a wrap for this week's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. But log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more news. Get interactive with us on all our social media platforms. On Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we are at the Ghana Web. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are Ghana Web TV. Thanks for making time with us. Have a splendid weekend. My name is Na Oyokote.